Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we are doing perhaps the most fun branch of chemistry that I can think of doing, which is of course organic chemistry. Oh, I got a squeaky marker. Organic chemistry. Organic is this word that has been actually corrupted by <laughs> the food industry because organic really in terms of chemistry means the chemistry of living things. Now, you can argue with me about the uh, food corruption moment, but really in terms of what that means for chemists is it means the study of the chemistry of carbon because organic chemistry is really all organic chemicals have carbon within them. Now carbon has a couple of things about it that are fantastic that we love to think about. Chemistry, ha uh, sorry chemistry, sorry. Carbon has two things about it that are particularly cool. And those two things can be labeled as such. It is tetravalent and it has the ability to catenate. Now, what does that mean? Tetravalent goes back to the same idea that we have been learning. What that basically means is literally that it has four valence electrons and therefore makes four bonds on a regular basis. Okay, so it's gonna need four electrons, valence electrons to fill its shell so that it achieves an octet. Catenation talks about the idea that carbon can bond to itself, and it does so over and over and over again, which makes huge, beautiful molecules. When I started teaching organic chemistry, I think we had somewhere in the realm of 10 to 15 million organic chemicals. These days, it's at least at 20 million plus. Okay, so you have a huge branch of chemistry in the midst of organic chemistry, which is why we like to abide by such rules. What we're gonna learn in terms of organic chemistry, we're gonna kind of consolidate <laughs> all of organic chemistry down to some basic things, at least in these videos. And those basic things are nomenclature, and this is not nomenclature of everything, this is really basic nomenclature of alkenes, alkynes and alkanes, that kind of idea. I'll talk about what those words are in a minute. Um, so there's nomenclature, there's isomerism, of which we're doing the most basic version of isomerism that we can. There's a lot more to be said there. Basically for all of this, there's a lot more to be said, <laughs> but we're gonna build. Okay, so nomenclature, isomerism, and a bit of reactions. Not really so much in terms of the reactions, but a little bit, enough to wet your whistle and make you excited for the class when it comes around, okay? So let's start with the nomenclature piece. In terms of nomenclature, what we tend to do is we tend to always start with the hydrocarbons. So let's talk about those hydrocarbons for a minute, which are fabulous. Now what I always ask my students of which you guys are a portion, those of you who are watching this video, right? I always ask my students, if you had to guess what two elements make up the major class of organic chemicals, the hydrocarbons, which two chemicals would you guess? And almost always someone says hydrogen and carbon, which is exactly right, because in organic, if you don't have appropriately labeled things, Appropriate labeled, appropriately labeled classes and such, then really where are you? Okay, so in terms of that, hydrocarbons are, like I said, a major class of organic compounds. They are composed of hydrogen and carbon. Okay, so. In terms of the hydrocarbons, there's three subclasses, major subclasses underneath the hydrocarbons. There are the alkanes, the alkenes, and the alkynes. 
Okay. The way these three classes differ from one, or subclasses differ from one another in terms of the way that their carbons are bonded to one another. Obviously, they don't differ in terms of the elements that make them up because all of them are composed of hydrogen and carbon. And since we know that hydrogen can only make one bond to something that's a central atom, these are only going to differ in terms of how the carbons are bonded together. So let's talk about alkanes. Alkanes have all single bonds between carbons. If you forgot for a moment what single bonds are, they are one line. They are um, a bond between two atoms that has uh, indicative within that one line is a sharing of two electrons. All right, alkenes, alkenes have at least one single bond. Or <laughs> Sorry, all single bonds are the alkanes. Alkenes have at least one double bond. And that one double bond better be between two carbons. Okay, so it has at least one double bond between the carbons. A lot of people, uh, when we start to get into functional groups, we'll talk about functional groups and what those are. Um, but a lot of people, when we particularly get into a, a functional group called the carbonyls, get very confused as to whether it's carbonyls or alkenes. I want you to remember that the double bond here has to be between two carbons. There's no other choice. All right? Okay. Alkynes. These have all single bonds, and that has at least one double bond. Then this must have at least... one triple bond between two carbons. And again, when we get to functional groups, folks start to get confused. Don't get confused. This, uh, to be an alkyne, it is important that it is a triple bond between carbons, okay? Now, in terms of the way these look and the way that they're named, what we do, is we tend to have some stems um, that we use. Stems meaning how many carbons are in a chain. And then we add an ending that is indicative of how those carbons are bond, bonded to one another. So in this case, we have anes, enes, and eines. The anes, enes, and eines are the important part, which is why I've underlined them. Okay, so keep that in your memory while we go on to the next step which is naming them. Okay, if you are following along, there is a organic handout in, a, in the learning modules um, that you want to print out. It is long. It is pretty much everything I want you to know about organic chemistry. So if you don't happen to have that handout with you, the next part that I'm gonna be doing is naming, which means that you need access to the stems for organic compounds, at least one through 10. Okay. And the stems you can find on Wikipedia, I'm sure, um, and it's probably right. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, but in terms of that, it, one is um, meth, it's meth. Okay, so you're looking for something that says one carbon meth, two carbons eth, three carbons, prop, four carbons, but, so on and so forth. And then five through 10 are pretty much the same stems that we used for Greek prefixes in naming the last time. All right, excellent. So let's start with something fabulous. I love the squeaky marker. Makes me kind of happy. Let's do that. Okay. Now, <laughs> in terms of what I just drew, notice that I drew something that was totally crazy. What the heck is that? Well, I skipped some steps, I'm sorry. What I should have done first is I should have given you something like this. Okay. 
Now, in terms of this, what this is, is this is showing all of the lines, the bonds between the carbons and all the bonds between the carbons and the hydrogens. What we call this is we call this a structural formula. It shows all the bonds between all the atoms. Okay. If we were going to have an in-between space between this and this, we might take this exact same formula and collapse all of the H's around each C and smush all the C's together. Okay, and that's called a collapsed or condensed formula. Oh, I ran off the screen there. Sorry. Woohoo! Let me put the formula underneath. Sorry. There we go, formula. There we are. And for this particular compound, if I smushed all those H's around each C and smushed all the C's together, then I could do this. That is really squeaky. I could write it like that, right? I could write it like this as well if I didn't want to repeat CH2 over and over and over again. Okay? All right. Notice that these are the exact same formula. This had one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Okay? All of these are the same. Okay? One of the things that happens is when you get a collapsed or condensed formula, you can make it into a structural formula if you would like to by just drawing out, recognizing those H's go around each C. And sometimes at the end, we'll put the H's on the opposite side. So sometimes you'll see something like this. That's just to show that the two C's are bonded together, if you didn't know, which as an organic chemist, you would always know. Okay. How do we get from structural formula to collapsed or condensed formula to this? This is called a skeletal formula or a line drawing. Okay, I'll write it like this. All right, what does this show? This thing right there also, just in case you hadn't noticed, shows six carbons. That's the crazy thing about it. It shows six carbons as well. But here, what we did is we didn't show any of the C's or any of the H's. All that we show are the bonds between the C's. Okay? And we could do this kind of zigzag moment because that's actually how the chain looks if you just looked at the carbons bonded to one another in kind of a model uh, or in actual space. 3D space, okay? The reason why is because, if you remember for a moment here, each of these carbons has four bonds around it. Because it each, each of those carbons has four bonds around it, they're actually each a tetrahedron. And tetrahedrons aren't flat, like I've shown here. Tetrahedrons have dimensionality to them, okay? So that's why it zigs up, it zigs up and down, okay? In terms of going from here, this line drawing, back to the structural formula, all that you do is at the end of every line or every juncture between two lines, you fill in a C. Bam, that has six carbons. And if you want to fill in the number of H's around each carbon, you remember at all times that carbon is tetravalent and makes four bonds around it. So if one of those bonds is taken up by a carbon to carbon bond, the other three bonds must be two H's. So there's that one. This one would be the same because it's at the end. And everyone in the middle has, every one of these carbons has one, two bonds. Around it. Because it has two bonds to carbons, that means it must have two bonds to H's as well to make four. Okay. And that's how we go from structural formulas to collapsed or condensed formulas, to line drawings. We still need to name this sucker, okay? So we tend to like line drawings the best. They are 
very, very nice, and they are very, very easy to use once you recognize what they are. So let's go back over here. We draw this line drawing and tell you something about it. All right, so what you're going to do whenever you are naming an organic compound is you are going to count the longest continuous carbon chain. The longest continuous carbon chain is what we label the parent chain, okay? The longest continuous carbon chain is sometimes easy to see, sometimes not. Okay, in this case, the longest continuous carbon chain we've already talked about is six carbons long. Because there's nothing weird about this chain, in other words, it doesn't have any double bonds, it doesn't have any triple bonds, it doesn't have any groups that can't be numbered, it doesn't have any functional groups, okay? We're just going to label it from left to right. Six carbons. Each of those carbons have single bonds between them. So what you would be looking up here is you would be looking up a stem that shows six carbons. From our Greek prefixes, we know that six was hex, right? Hex meant six carbons. And then you want to show in the ending what main subclass it's under, okay? How are these carbons bonded to one another? And if you remember back to what I just wrote, when these carbons have single bonds between them, then we put them in the class of alkanes. So we're going to add an ane ending here. And the name of this particular molecule is hexane. Okay? We will continue to name things in the next few videos, but until then, I'll see you soon. Adieu.